Hello everyone. Welcome to Draft Day Sports College Football 2024, which by Wolverine Studios. Today we're going to do a tutorial and mention the new features related to budgets and recruiting. So to start out, the first new thing that you can do is go to the left-hand menu, click on Teams, and navigate to the team that you are interested in updating. That will load the team office, which has a lot of helpful information related to schedules, impact players, news, recent commits, scholarships, class rank, and whatnot. Also has a top menu of all the additional screens that you can go to for a particular team. So to start off, we're going to go into the staff screen to discuss the new budget features. So each team now will have a total budget assigned based off of prestige and other factors. And of that budget, you can use it for staff salaries or recruiting or facilities. So the way this works is you will sign your staff and then you'll have leftover money that you'll be able to spend on recruiting. And then any leftover money after staff and recruiting costs have been factored in will be applied to facilities upgrades. So if you spend enough money in facilities, your facility rating will increase. If you do not save enough money for facilities, they could possibly decrease your facility rating. And this could be uh, impactful as you recruit certain students that are looking for good facilities. So that's how the budget works, and you can see it here under the team staff. Once we go into the recruit players menu, this is where you'll be able to to see your recruiting dashboard, which again has a lot of commit information, some schedules, it has news, emails, it has a list of your current pipelines for your team or your coaches, and it has a nice dashboard of the different uh, budget information, scholarship information, uh, class rank, and whatnot. There's an additional toggle switch that will affect the recruit delegation. So if you do not want to handle recruiting yourself, you can turn Delegate Recruiting on, which will tell the AI to go ahead and handle recruiting for you. If you leave it off, then you're able to recruit the students manually that you wish to recruit. So to actually dive into recruiting, you would click this View Recruits button, which initially gives you a list of recommended players to add to your targeting database. So. The recommended players are based off of proximity to your school and other matches to your coaching staff, pipelines, that kind of thing, where the AI has determined that these are some of the, the better students to go ahead and start recruiting. Feel free to use this list to start your journey, or if you'd rather, you can change this filter to all players, and then you'd be able to recruit anyone that's on the list that you wish to add to your target list. The other filters here are helpful for narrowing down by state or distance or position if you're looking for something more specific. So to get started, I'm going to just add a handful to my recruiting list, or to my targets list, sorry. And once I do that, I'm able to see that shave down list under targets. This shows just the students that are on my targeting list. Now at this point, I can change my view and either keep it in the summary view, or I can move to a scouting view, which will show you scouting report information about the student's different skills and rating. Or I can look at a personality view, which will show you various information about the student's personalities. And when you're ready to actually do some recruiting actions, you click on actions under the select view, which brings up this screen, which has the ability to check recruiting actions, also allows you to see the current interest of a student in your particular school, also shows you any outstanding scholarship offers or uh, and your current uh, budgeting dollars spent for that particular group. I'm going to go over these left or right. The interview column will allow you to spend $1,000 to recruit a student. And this, or sorry, to interview a student. So this interview gives you additional information about the student and their personality and, and traits and whatnot that uh, is usually worth the money to spend. So you know a little bit more about who you're looking at, what they're interested in. Uh, it's very helpful information. The contact recruiting action is any contact with the student. It's not really a phone call. It's more of a, uh, like you send a brochure to the student's house or you, you just very generic kinds of contact where you're reaching out to a student to give them information about your school. So contacts are the cheapest way of interacting with a student. The contacts are $1,000 and then they can be done up to 50 contacts per week. So you can contact 50 different students 
uh, in any given recruiting week. Phone calls are also very valuable because this is a, a coaching staff member actually reaching out to the student, either a direct phone call, text message, um, Zoom call, where they're actually seeing them face to face. The phone calls are a little bit more impactful. They drive interest a little bit higher, but they cost a little bit more money. And so for phone calls, we have it limited to 25 phone calls a week that can be scheduled by your staff. The next one is a home visit. And home visits, we have limited to 15 home visits a week because they're a little bit more involved. This is where the staff will fly to the student's hometown to meet with the student, either at their home, at their school, some common location uh, where the student is comfortable. So the home visits can be done 15 times a week. You can do up to six of these per student per year. So you can visit Buddy Lyons six times uh, during his recruiting journey, um, which the home visits are much more impactful because you're sending a coaching staff to the student's home. You, they're much more impactful, but they also cost a lot more money because you got to factor in travel and, and whatnot for your coaching staff. This uh, cost will vary depending on how far away the student is from your campus. The more, you know, the further they are away, the more expensive it gets to travel to that location. Official visits are even more impactful. This is where you bring a student and their family, you, you bring them on campus, you put them up in hotels, you, you, you know, pay for their travel, you pay for their meals, you, you're basically uh, inviting them for, you know, a longer period of time to, to stay on campus. The official visits also are impacted by travel distance. So, you know, the more expensive that they are it, due to how far away from your particular campus the student is. But these are the most impactful. So where contact and phone calls are, have minimal impacts on interest, home visits a little bit more, official visits have the most impact on, on you know, swaying a student to potentially join you at your school. Official visits are limited to 25 per week, but you only get one official visit per student during their recruiting journey. So whereas contacts and phone calls can be done every week and they're unlimited per student, home visits are limited to six, official visits are limited to one, so that you only get one shot at that. After that, once you get a sufficient interest built up in a student and you think that they're ready to sign with your school, you can click this button to offer them a scholarship. And once they get the scholarship, if they have sufficient interest built up in your school and they decide that your school is the best one for them, then that is when they will commit to your school. So I'm going to go through. We've already interviewed everybody. We've contacted everybody. We've scheduled phone calls with everybody. We have a few home visits set up and a couple of official visits set up. So now I can go sim on to the next week. I'm going to click my play sim button. I'm going to sim this week. And then I'm going to go back into my recruit player screen and see what impacts my recruiting actions had on those particular students. So you click on new recruits, and then I will switch over to the actions. And you can see that the official visits for these two students really had an impact. They're very interested in joining us. They have a lot of interest. This doesn't mean they don't have interest in other schools, but for this particular case, it's working well. They're very interested in, in joining us, whereas Roy Harwell is not as interested. His interest meter didn't jump up as much. Uh, he wasn't as interested in, in what we had to say uh, when we did our contacts and our, our phone calls and home visits. So you can see how various actions can impact the interest of the student and sway them toward um, committing to your school. And that is uh, the tutorial for how to do recruiting actions and how to gauge the interest and how this impacts your recruiting spend in uh, College Football 2024. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our Slack channel, on our forum, or on our Discord. Thank you very much.